kurma is a buttery, crunchy, deep-fried Indian sweet that is coated with a spiced syrup. Hi guys, I'm Erica of Erica's Joyful Oven and today we're going to make some kurma. To begin, in a large mixing bowl add 3 cups of all-purpose flour, 1 tablespoon of full cream powdered milk, 1 tablespoon of coconut milk powder, 1 quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and 3 quarter teaspoons of ground elaichi or cardamom. Stir these ingredients together just until it's well combined and next I'll add one and a half teaspoon of finely grated ginger and one tablespoon of condensed milk. Next I'll add two third cups of cold margarine that I've grated and I find that grating the cold butter helps it to mix in better into the flour and you do want to use margarine to make this kurma. You can use unsalted butter but the unsalted butter tends to be too soft and so the kurma is going to be too crumbly. So to give you that perfect crunchy kurma, you definitely want to use margarine. Mix all of your ingredients together until the margarine is well distributed in the flour and it's a fine cornmeal texture. So once your mixture is ready, I've measured out half cup of evaporated milk but I'm not going to add all at once. I'm going to add gradually and mix the dough as I go along. With each addition, I'm going to work the milk into the flour mixture and you want to form a very firm dough. Press the dough together until all of the liquid has been absorbed. Repeat this process until all of the milk has been added and you have a very firm dough. You may use maybe a tablespoon more or less of milk to give you the perfect texture. So again, don't add all of the milk at once. You want to add it in portions and mix as you go along. You can also use water in place of the evaporated milk, but the evaporated milk gives you a more crunchy, rich tasting kurma. Once the dough pulls together, I'll turn it onto a very lightly floured surface. I'm going to gently knead the dough together and this is going to make the dough more pliable and it's going to create a smooth surface. It takes about a minute of kneading to get your dough nice and smooth and as you can see it's quite firm. This dough can be rolled out immediately to make the kurma but if you're not going to use it immediately you do want to keep it in the fridge wrapped tightly in plastic wrap or wax paper. While the oil is heating I'm going to gently roll the dough on a lightly floured surface to about half an inch in thickness. I like to press the edges together as I'm rolling the dough and by the time I'm finished rolling the dough, the edges are going to be nice and smooth and this way I'm not going to have to trim the edges. An easier way to flip the dough is to gently roll the dough onto the rolling pin and rotate the dough on your surface. So now my dough is just about ready. It's half inch in thickness. Cut the dough into rows roughly 3 inches wide. And next, I'm going to work one row at a time, cutting each row into smaller strips, similar to french fries. Here you can see that perfect cut and it's roughly half of an inch on both sides. The kurma needs to fry on a very high heat. And so once the oil is nice and hot, I'm going to place the first batch of kurma into the hot oil. As you place the kurma into the pot, don't stir it immediately. Gently stir the outside as the kurma begins to cook and it is going to release and it's not going to stick together. You also don't want to overcrowd the pot because if you do the oil temperature is going to drop and the kurma is not going to cook properly. It takes roughly 2-3 to three minutes for the kurma to finish frying and turn a beautiful golden color. Carefully remove the kurma from the hot oil and place them into a dried bowl. And now I can prepare the sugar syrup that is going to coat these delicious kurma. To make the syrup in a light saucepan, add 1 cup of granulated sugar, 1 cup of water, 1 and a half teaspoons of grated ginger and 3 cardamom pods lightly crushed. Bring this to a boil on a medium to high heat, stirring occasionally until the sugar dissolves and the syrup has thickened. This takes roughly 15 to 20 minutes and you'll know your syrup is ready when the surface is filled with a lot of white bubbles and the syrup falls very slowly from the spoon, almost as if it's forming a thread as it falls. At this point the kurma is nice and cool and I'm going to pour very carefully some of the sugar syrup over the kurma and begin to stir with the metal spoon. As you stir, the sugar syrup is going to form a dry coating of spiced sugar onto the kurma. 
As the coating dries, you can also mix the kurma gently in the bowl and this also helps the drying process. So now that the sugar syrup has dried, you can see that even coating of sugar on the kurma, this looks so perfect and let me break it and show you what the inside looks like. You can see it's light, it is so crunchy and buttery. This kurma is the best. My favorite part is the ginger and spices that comes across in this rich kurma. So guys, let me know in the comments below if you guys try this recipe and what you think. I hope you guys enjoyed spending time with me today. And be sure to like and subscribe to Erica's Joyful Oven on Facebook and YouTube. And also check out my website, joyfuloven.com. I'll see you guys next time for another amazing recipe.